Hello and welcome to our Gems of the Alshek and we're starting um, one week late. I must apologise. I was in Europe uh, visiting my grandchildren and the children. And notice the order of the words. Grandchildren and children. Uh, really you should start with grandchildren first. Uh, which takes us very nicely into um, the Alshek that I want to focus on um, in this belated Gems of the Alshek and Bracious. Um, let's start as we, as we have been doing. Um, in our art school homage and if you have one of those it's, we're on page eight um if you are using others then it's chapter one so right at the beginning of genesis and it's verse kof vov which is of course um uh, 20 26 and this is what it says the elohim rather famous this Vayom elohim and, and god says uh, struggling with the translating in that way because of course in hebrew there are many different names for gods the God um, and the Elohim is uh, just one, but okay, we'll stick with that. But Yomer Elohim, and God says, "Nasa Odin b'tzalmi, no let us make man in our image, kedem b'seinu, in our likeness." For Yard b'degas Yom, and He rule over all the fish in the sea. But Oifish Shemaim, He'll have dominance over the birds in the sky, by Behemoth, and all the animals, and call Horus throughout the land, and call for Ramos, the Ramos of Horus, and the creepy crawlies too. The Yivra Elohim is Odin, and God created man b'tzalmi. In his image, Tselam Elohim Bara Isai Zochna Gibbon Bara Isai Zochna Gibbon both male and female. Fine. That's what we're looking at. The Alshach, of course, like everybody, is perplexed and troubled by the fact that let us make man. And in fact, Rashi and various other commentators point out that by writing that, and Moshe was reluctant to write that, and actually, uh, as it were, said to Hashem, are you sure about this? Because people turn and say, ah, there is more than one God because it says, let us make man. Uh, however, there are several answers to why, who the us are. One answer, which is going to be very crucial, um, is that he goes to his Beit Din, the angels in heaven, and he asked for their opinion on whether or not a man should be made. Uh, and they answered, now I pause here to give you a chance to say either yes or no, because everybody always chooses yes or no, but both on the wrong answer. They said, what's a man? After all, there never had been one before. And Hashem describes what we are, what our nature is, and that we have the ability to be at a far higher spiritual level than angels, uh, who are, after all, only automatons, spiritual robots, uh, who conform to an algorithm and have to do exactly what they're what they programmed to do. Not so human beings. And therefore, by exercising freedom of choice and attaching yourself to God, you can supersede uh, the spiritual level of an angel. Or we could be uh, the ultimate rebels who uh, attack everything that Hashem tries to put in the world that was good and even rebel against him, which we come to, of course, uh, uh, very shortly with the Latour of Bovel. Uh, so the angel said, what's a man? And when Hashem said what we are, they said, no, not a good idea. And Hashem overrules them anyway. That's the let us make man, one opinion. But another opinion, that's the one the Alshach says, and I think it's very, very interesting indeed, and very inspirational, really. Um, he quotes a, a famous Medrash, and in the Medrash, there's somebody called Reb Simloi. And Reb Simloi establishes a principle. Whenever there is something in the Torah, in the script of the Torah, which is contentious, and which could be used by the enemies of the Torah um, as, as a weapon, let us make man is a particularly good example, uh, then the refutation of that implication, that sounded very wordy, to refute the implication of let us make man that's well among God, then the proof that the, um, the opposite of the true is right beside it, comes straight away. So that's the second positive. So let's, let me read that to you again. Let us make man in our image. The, the animals, etc. And then the next positive. It's in the singular. God created man. Only God created man. Um, so there was no other, but the others he was talking to, in one opinion, was the angels. However, the Alshach says no. The ones who he says, let us make man, is Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve. He said to us, in, in partnership, and that's why the Medrash goes on to say, there are three partners in the creation of a human being. Every man requires a woman. Every woman requires a man in the creation of a human being. And both require the Almighty to put the spiritual component into what is a human being. God is inviting us to partner with him in the creation of human beings. After all, 
we educate, we bring them physically into the world, we create them, we conceive them. Hashem puts the spiritual uh, dimension into the child. But in order to allow that spiritual dimension to be fruitful, to expand and to grow, then we become partners with God in that, in, in that journey. And that's a big responsibility. After all, we're only in the world in order to grow spiritually. Um, and yet we are the custodians of a soul, and sometimes many souls. Um, they look like us, they will be guided by us, and of course that leads on to a whole world of how does Judaism say that you should bring up your children. Uh, maybe we'll leave it just here um, with the thought of Shlomo HaMelech. Chanach l'nar al pidarkoi. Bring your child up according to his or her path. Our children do look like us. Very often they have temperaments just like ours. That's usually one of the big problems. Um, they have talents that they got from us, and interests that they get from us. As the old saying says, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. A very important and appropriate metaphor, saying we're talking about Genesis. <sighs> Those who know the Bible will get that joke. Um, anyway, but the important point is that even though they're so like us, they are not us. So don't make the mistake as a parent of trying to replicate your life and project it forward through your child. They have to make their own way in the world. Avram was Mr. Chesed. He was the al the the philanthropist. He was the, al the was altruistic. He was Mr. Chesed, Mr. Kindness. But yes, it wasn't. He went in a different direction. He still maintained the upward path, the trajectory of Avram Avinu in connecting with God, but he did it his way. And Yaakov wasn't like Yitzchak. To bring a child into the world and then guide it forward is to guide it in the child's path. Be your partner in, 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 this, in this task. You're a partner in this mission. God says, let us make man. He's talking to the mother. He's talking to the father. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. That's because I am a father and I'm a grandfather. And that's why we're late, a week late because I rushed over to spend four days seeing my children and grandchildren and getting a bit of nachos. But I think the message I've just given here uh, my late wife and I, more or less, uh, were successful in in uh, passing on to them. I wish you a good Shabbos. And now I have to record uh, Noach because I'm a week late.